Thank you for having us today. Oh, we appreciate it. Guys, good. we're going to jump right into it. What is Lasso for people that don't know? Uh, so Lasso is a Latin American student organization here on campus, uh, founded by Carlos Ortiz. Uh, he's one of the professors here. Um, he taught art and uh, creative. He actually has a couple art murals here at Dixon Hall. Um, he started it in 1970 as a way to uh, represent uh, Latinos and minorities on campus. Uh, for over 50 years, we've been showing GMMs uh, every week uh, at the student center in like different rooms, um, just promoting like you know good team building skills, networking, um, how to teach uh, you know Latinos and minorities and other uh, you know students about the beauty behind Latino culture, and uh, yeah. Just basically building a family, or as we like to call it, a familia. And we come together every single week. We speak, um, you know, we grow a lot of relationships and it's just a great way to network and come together as a community. Awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, what are some of your duties as president of LASSO? Uh, so like as president uh, of LASSO, I mean, other than being a good like role model and a good figure on campus, um, it's my job to make sure that uh that all that you know all students not you know not you know specific to Latinos but like all students feel welcomed uh, to be a part of Lasso in our program and learn more about the Hispanic culture. Um, also, you know, find ways where I could help out other committees on campus. Um, like yesterday, for example, we had, uh, we supported the start of Black History Month, so we work with uh, the African Studies Department as well. Um, we especially work closely with the Hispanic caucus here on campus. Um, so yeah, so basically being well connected around campus and uh, being somebody that welcomes everyone. So yeah. That's really nice. That's yeah. Um, now I ask you the same question. As secretary, what is your role exactly? So as secretary, I basically oversee the email. I have to maintain a very close relationship with different orgs, um, such as Greek Life, different um, like yeah. other other orgs such as like HSA, Haitian Student Association, Uaso, Mufasa, just a bunch of different orgs and being able to um, have a clear communication with them and just invite them to our events as well as they invite us to their events and we just co-sponsor each other. Um, also like inviting other students, making sure, you know, everyone feels welcomed at Lasso when we're there at the GMM. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what has been your journey since you first, since you both started Lasso? Um, you go first. I can work with <laughs> um, since I first started Lasso, I feel like I've grown, um, not just as like a person, but also camera, like yeah. within like the community. I feel like Lasso has camera. brought me another sense of family. Like Montclair State is already family, I believe. And I like, you know, I'm part of the business school. I think everyone there is like well connected. Everyone, you know, likes to know everyone. Sure. But like Lasso just brought me like another family and a family that is like similar to me like these people these like people are um they go through the same things that i do you know we're minorities you know most of the times we are second second out like sec like always doubted um you know we we need to like work a little bit harder and i feel like coming into lasso in that sense like i know that all of us are going through the same struggles and we just support each other and you know get through it nice um my, I mean, my journey with Lasso, it's been like a long one. Oh, I'm a, a senior here at Montclair, so um, I've been I've been with Lasso since, like a, since I was a sophomore. I started as a miembro, which means like member. Um, I did that for like the first two years, year and a half. Yeah, two years. And um, I decided I wanted to be a part of eBoard. So last year I was a, the vice president, and like this year I'm the president. So now I have like different understandings of how Lasso runs and like the impact it has on campus. Um, but my journey has been like, you know, it's been great because like all the friends that I have right now or like any like networking, like people that's in, a part of me now and like I could go to them for any type of advice came from Lasso. So that's pretty cool. By the way, I didn't get to like meet you guys, like um, your, your names and stuff like that. Oh, well, that's Aiden right oh, yeah. there. Aiden Ping. He's an enigma of a human being. There's Aiden. only one Aiden. He looks like he looks like a, like a really good friend to have like near. Like, oh, Aiden's the best, him. man. Yeah. He comes up clutch every night for me. Um, great guy. Uh, glad he's my co-host now. I'm Isaiah Ramirez. Uh, I'm the producer of the show as well. Hey, uh, Ramirez. Hey. Are you, uh, your last name is Latino. Are you? Are you... I'm, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican? Yeah, That's yeah, cool, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my Puerto people. Rican as well. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. Aiden's Puerto Rican. Um, 
but yeah, um, <laughs> as you guys said earlier, you guys <laughs> talked about this idea of family, um, and that's super cool because I think, especially at your commuter, are you a commuter as well? Um, I res. Okay. So as like a commuter, uh, oftentimes when you're, especially at this campus, and I'm sure at other campuses, yeah. you kind of just feel like you're going with the flow for the most part until you join like an organization, and that's kind of how I felt for I'm a senior as well, uh, for like my first three years here until I got started with the station. Yeah is that I was kind of just, because you're so busy as a commuter, you got work, you got all these other things, and then it's hard to make time to really experience college, I guess. Yeah. So when I joined here, I started to like actually meet people with similar interests and all that stuff. So I think there's like a similar kind of connection through radio and then obviously through Lasso, where people, you know, bond over this the similarities that they have. Yeah. Um, and, and if you guys, anyone in Lasso want to join the Morning Buzz, you know, there's a door right open, my line's open, uh, we have plenty of spots available um, because there's one thing that I've noticed during my time at my station is that I've only had one Hispanic co-host, and that was last semester. Shout out to Crystal, if you're ever listening to this. My girl, Crystal. Shout out to Crystal. Shout Crystal the go, man. Uh, she was here last semester with Aiden as well, and she was a lot of fun. Uh, but if you guys have anyone interested, just know the opportunity is open for them, yeah. and I would love to work with them and give opportunities to fellow Hispanic people out there. That's um, fantastic, man. I know, uh, like, I found a Carlos Ortiz who would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, you know, Alaso has this um this phrase that is called and uh, it says, um, "En unidad hay fuerza." Um, basically, in unity there's strength. You know, so basically, you know, you you know, putting that branch out. I definitely let the members know that. Yeah. You know, they can contact Isaiah whenever they want. Whenever they want to, if someone does something very big for your guys' organization, have them on for an interview. You know. Yeah, uh, my goal, at least as producer, is to give as many students that don't get the platform to talk about what they're doing, the platform that they need to talk. Because a lot of times you can just do something, but no one knows about it. So if I could help even just one person get the opportunity to have exposure, that would make my day at least. But enough about me, guys. Uh, we're going to move on. You guys talked about your meetings. So what exactly happens at a typical meeting for Lasso? I like um, talking. So at a mini meeting every single week, um, for general member meetings, they're different. So for example, today is actually our first DMM. Hey, and shout out guys! What time? What time? What time? What time? Three thirty, guys. Yeah. Last, I'll be there. If you got an air horn, you gotta press that. <laughs> <laughs> You do? You guys do that air horn? Uh, we got a few sound effects. I don't know. Guys, guys, you gotta find it as a. Come on, we got this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, last song, GMM. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. I like that. But today is basically our welcome back GMM meeting, which we are super excited to welcome our miembros from last semester as well as new miembros. Um, and yeah, basically, we get started with the new semester. We have a lot planned this semester, so I'm really excited for. We have our, week, our Road to Love Week starting next week, um, just full of different events, both like including self love. Um, including, you know, um, love words to each other, to others. Um, we have a love movie planned. Like, we're just very excited to get this started. It's yeah, a season of love, guys. Mm -hmm. It's a season of love, yep. One of, the, one of my favorite events is, uh, I think it's on Tuesday. Um, it's called Guerra de los Sexos. And uh, it's like war between the sexes. Um, and basically, it's going to be talking about, like, the do's and do nots when you're, you know, slapping into the DMs. Or whatever. Oh, that'd be so great, yeah. guys. <laughs> That, that you know that'd be a good uh radio show host like uh yeah you know it's crazy you can what's, catch... what not to do and what to do when you're sliding into yeah DMs, uh, if you want conversations idea. like that you could tune in every sunday at 9 a.m all the fields guys the show hosted by a guy wearing a steelers hat uh -huh. named Isaiah. <laughs> check it out guys spotify and all that other stuff too we co-sign <laughs> What have been some of the proudest moments you have had while being part of Lhasa? Uh, some of the proudest moments. I'm, also, right now, the proudest moment I would have had uh, for Which like me as part of Lhasa is becoming president. That was really cool. Um, it's been oh wow, is that me? So yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah, I should be good. Um, but yeah, no. One of my proudest moments was becoming president. We haven't had like a like you know a male president in a long time, which is not an important part. Um, but like for me as a Latino man and like not being afraid to give back uh, to the community, that's definitely really cool. Um, but right now would be the, um, so we had a Hispanic Heritage Month back in October and we partnered up with uh, HSI, which is like the Hispanic uh, Serving Institution. Um, 
here on, ca on campus. So we partnered up with them and we do like a big block party, right? So like we had everybody, like a lot of people come to the middle of the student center in the quad. And we had an empanada truck there. We had a salsa band there mm -hmm. and they were just playing music really loud. Everybody was having a good time. Everybody was online though for the empanada truck. I don't know if you guys ever had it, uh, empanada lady in Verona. So good. No, really no, good. Really empanada. good empanadas. If you guys are looking for something for lunch, you, you and Aiden should go out today. Can, can I um ask what where the what kind of empanadas were they? Like where where is the taco truck from? Were they like Puerto Rican empanadas or Colombian? I would say like I don't know, but it was put like at the end of the day, the dude was just like empanadas so and empanadas. It was just but yeah. I think they're Puerto Rican and Cuban okay. or something like that. But it was like really like really big yeah, empanadas. Yeah. yeah. I know we're talking about like the proudest moments, but my proudest moments when I've been into empanada. <laughs> yeah, like yo, bro, it was it was really good and I, I really enjoyed it. Um but to do something like that was super like you know impressive for me. And like I'm proud of that because you know, we're bringing um you know, the Latino characteristics, those traits and all that goes up to campus. And, you know, we were playing salsa really loud. So even through the classrooms, you could hear it. And I'm sure that was a conversation starter. Like, oh, wow, what's that? I want to know a little bit more. And people are in class just moving their, their hips and moving their shoulders. Like, oh, snap. Yeah, I like that. So, And then you heard my voice in the back is emceeing and everything like, you know, so. Yeah, man, that was pretty cool. Shout out to uh, David um, and, and uh, his band and also Nico and his Bomberos. Bomberos. They're part of here for the music school here at, on campus. So awesome. definitely recommend him to interview him if you ever get a chance. For sure. Uh, before you would uh, uh, answer the same question, Alexa, I'd say this is WMC Upper Montclair 90.3 FM, and we are here with the president and secretary of the Lasso. Now you can go answer. <laughs> so I'd say um, my proudest moment as a while being part of LASO, definitely becoming secretary is something new and out of my comfort zone. Um, originally, my freshman year, I was a commuter, um, you know, and never had time to be involved in anything because I found myself yeah. just going to class um, and going straight back home just to work and, you know, never being part of anything. And, we just don't um, want to sound you know, just we're only having my actual friends actual back at home, I didn't <laughs> really need anyone. While we, while we and then sports. COVID happened, so that didn't help. And now, you know, I came back, we're here, I'm dormy now. I made a lot of friends. Lasso brought that sense of, you know, family to me. So I met a lot of people through Lasso, which I'm so grateful for. Um, some of which even became my coworkers here um, in the IT lab. So, you know, I'm really happy for that. But I'd say my proudest moment definitely was like helping plan the, uh, my first Lasso prom, yeah. which happened back in December. Um, we had such a great time. Cool. I really, really enjoyed every single part also, of it. Like um, you know, like everything that went with it definitely like showed how like so how well we work as a team. So and, you know, just communication so is key and, you know, just being able to yes, work so together. The music was great. I, I, the, the DJ was amazing. You know, the assistant to president, she did a, an amazing job finding that DJ. He had us partying all night. You have to, um, you have to pick like a And yeah, so that was definitely something that made like, me proud. And I look forward to, you know, the next big events that Lasso has planned. Right. Absolutely. Well, like, that was a good one. Regular news, like, <laughs> great answer, guys. <laughs> uh, but uh, moving on to our next question here, um, you know, a lot of times people are unfamiliar with other people's culture. so. You know, the first time I ever, I think it was in high school, I shared someone, like an empanada with somebody. Yeah. They were mind blown because like, what is this thing? Where are so, you from? What high school you went to? Uh, we don't got to talk about it. Moving right. on, you know, <laughs> my high school days were not the best. A lot, a lot of interest in people that were opposites of what I am. So it created definitely not ideal interactions. We'll leave it at that, guys. Um, <laughs> I feel it. Yeah, yeah. Question, John. <laughs> <laughs> leave it to the host. Yeah. So, you know, what are some things you think people should know about your guys' culture? So um, I am Ecuadorian and Venezuelan. Um, I think like the main thing you think of when, even if you just think of like a Hispanic, like a, like country, like you just think of a country, you know, you're just, I'm just from this country. I think the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, they're Hispanic. Like, oh, like, I don't know. They think of like maybe poverty because, you know, most of our countries are third world countries, you know, unfortunately. And oh, Venezuela right now is going through a lot of things and it's been going through a lot for years, you know, yeah, communism yeah, and everything. Yeah. Ecuador is the same. Um, now it's turning communist. But I think the, the best way to like just show, you know, like our cultures through like food and telling them, you know, like, listen, 
there's these things that you know aren't that good right now but listen like the food is amazing what kind of food though let me introduce you oh (laughs) so for example um we have something called ornado which is it's pernil but we just call it ornado oh cool cool. and um it has it comes um, with like mote which is like this like corn this white corn it's so so good um yapingacho which is like a little potato um like a little potato circle like fried it's really good um and cebollado which is red onions and tomato cut with some lemon juice cilantro it's really good and like rice that's usually like a typical plate in ecuador and it's just all the food there is good like i can sit here and name like all the food that there is (laughs) that's perfectly fine with me i'm I'm definitely a foodie um so we can talk about food for like three hours guys (laughs) same question to you as well uh i mean for me I'm, i'm dominican um which is pretty cool um, i love being dominican we actually have our independence day this week uh this month like you need to be there uh, to be fact check me but i think so it's on like, 28 get, this, like, so. get more involved um, more things but that I'll have a uh, i would say one thing you should know about you know my culture and like latino culture in general is just like there's so much love in it um we're, we're never the type to like push anyone away so if you ever feel like hey you know, that's their thing, all that good stuff. Like, it's not like that. We want you to be a part of it and learn as much yeah. as possible. Try as many different foods. Um, I think another piece that, like, in my head that's popping up right now is also to understand, like, you know, we have a lot of, um, you know, an- like ancestral ties with, like, um, you know, the African community as well um, because of our, our early descendants and all that good stuff. So a lot of the food you see that we have yeah, has been, you know, incorporated with um, African culture as well, like from the Tainos and all that good stuff. And, um, it's all mixed in so it's, it, we have a mix of everything for you guys to like you know take part of dancing food yeah, like, like you were mentioning <laughs> earlier um <laughs> but those, those are the things that you should enjoy as you uh go on your journey to learn more about the hispanic latino community um it's definitely a fun one so 100 percent can can agree with that statement guys um definitely a fun set of community uh moving on to not our final question but close to the final guys you're doing great um you know recently you know growing up obviously you didn't really feel a lot of representation in media especially you know i think the closest representation that i ever had was the george lopez show and that was pretty much it. great show loved it. exactly 3 a.m you wake up somehow the show is still on kind of deal um but that was really much that was it for the most part when you think about on television and on movies and even when you think about it jessica alba you know yeah in fantastic four they made her look as white as possible um so that shows you what the culture was like back then but now you flash forward to today and it feels like you know we're getting our opportunities you know, we just had like the first animated movie and it's killing it, like Encanto is Encanto killing it right now. We're actually doing a movie night yep. next week. Yeah. Yeah. Showing yeah. Up Encanto. So if you want to watch it, it's going to be on Zoom. There it is, guys. Um, but yeah, that's that's been killing it on the billboard charts. And the thing about that is like, it's one thing to have a movie that's just popular within a community. But that movie has sparked the interest of everyone, really. So yeah. it's definitely an easy way for kids and even adults to learn about for someone's culture know. through a movie like that, that without movie. really actively learning it, you know? It's that just movie subtle. does like a really great uh, job yeah, in mean, showing what like I feel I like that. all of us, like as Hispanics and maybe even like just one. any culture, just go through. Like you see the pressure that um that they all felt to be perfect. And to not let their uh, family yeah, down, Justin which is like, I feel like most of us can relate, you know, if like, trying yeah, to, you know, in quotations, be someone and, you know, do something with ourselves, you know, our parents, you know, could be, um, for, most of us are first generation um, college students and we have a lot of like pressure on our shoulders you know we are constantly like you know being pushed you know be great you have a 4.0 no you need a higher gpa like you know (laughs) so it's like it's constant pressure i think that movie does like a great job in really showing like what we go through as like um as hispanics and just in general with everything even if it's at work it's at school just everything they 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 just showed like you know they oh, they constantly the wanted to make their shows. family feel proud of them you, you and the much, you know, even the grandma being upset you know, like you know like so worrying awesome. about what the future for maribel is going to be she you know like ended up not being able to get powers so you know like it just shows the worry and the pressure just throughout the family not just you know on the, yeah. on, on the kids absolutely and before we let yeah. you guys go we can't thank you enough for having on the show but lasso can you please remind everyone how they can get involved, 
where they can get involved. Yeah. Um, definitely follow us on uh, on Lasso1970 on Instagram. That's first and foremost. You get a lot of information there. Um, in there, you'll see our group me. If you want to be a part of our group me, where we have a network of a, of a lot of miembros where you could just, you know, get around and sit down and just talk with them and, you know, link up if you wanted to the study or anything like that. Um, come to our events. We're having a, a week of love next week. So definitely do that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much. We also have Facebook. We also have uh, our Instagram. We're thinking about starting up a TikTok. Um, start it up. Capitalize on it. <laughs> Capitalize. Yes, we'll, we'll start up a TikTok. And you guys will see me on there. I love TikTok. I don't know about you TikTok's guys. TikTok's addicting, guys. Just go viral. Shout out your favorite co host. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out, guys. Aiden, yo. I won't be <laughs> hashtag everyone needs an Aiden. Like, for real. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, once again, cannot thank you enough, John, Alexa. It was a, honestly a pleasure having you guys on. Talk about lots us. of appreciate it, man. This is definitely fun. I'll do it again. Hey, the door's open, guys, and we're gonna go on to break. All right, we're going. We're gonna, you know, transition to some lighter stuff for the rest of the day, guys. So stay tuned to the morning buzz here on WMC Upper Montclair, and you know, enjoy this next song. <laughs>